So, before we get to this auto gang and connect all the dots here for the first time ever, I don't believe any podcast or any piece of media out there has been able to connect all the dots, but this is what we are attempting to do. Before we do that, I do want to address that Mora, that there is a vehicle in the ATM footage. Now, regarding the ATM stills, like, let's put aside for a moment, obviously some people believe it's all fake. Other people believe the footage is indeed real, but it is not from February 9th. It is from the day before, or a few days before, or maybe even a week or two before. But it is curious that there appear there's a vehicle here that does not appear to be the Saturn. So if there's snow on the ground, so some people say the ATM footage inverts the colors. But does it really? Because if there's snow on the ground, the snow is white, and it looks white. We have photos of here of Maura Murray wearing a, a similar jacket to what she's allegedly wearing in the ATM footage, and it is white in the ATM footage, and it is white in the color photos. So, I'm not, I don't know what to make of this theoretical inversion. Some people are stating that white looks like black and black looks like white, but we're not really seeing that here. I mean, even look at the trees in the background. I mean, trees are brown. This is not rocket science. I mean, I know there's a lot of, the, the Dunning-Kruger crowd is really attracted to the Maura Murray case, but I mean, come on. Trees are brown, dark brown, medium brown, and they appear quite dark in the footage here again. So... Uh, I haven't been to this particular ATM on the inside, so I don't know the exact colors here, but the ceiling here looks white, the walls look relatively dark. I don't know if that would be gray or whatever. Possibly a blue, dark blue color, but whatever. So, but white looks white. So this vehicle out here, it would not be black. It would be white, and it looks white. And then on the inside... It does not appear to be white leather or white seats. They appear to be dark seats. So brown, gray, or black on the inside of the vehicle, just like the dash, it appears to be dark. And the rear bumper also, I mean, I don't know what that is. That Maybe that's something else. Obviously, this is not good quality. But just in the interest, again, of examining everything, whose vehicle is that? Now, some people are stating that would not be her vehicle. So her vehicle will be parked elsewhere. So someone posted this. I don't know who. Whoever wants credit can take it. I mean, these are just aerials from different maps. Uh, if you look at the aerial over the ATM, there wouldn't really be a car there unless it's for the person in the ATM. I mean, there's just no reason for anybody else to park there. So either she's by herself or she's with someone else, but that's not the Saturn. So if she's with another individual, are they the driver waiting in the car for her? Because we can't see the driver. Now, the passenger seat, we can kind of sort of see a little bit. Um, if the person is, like, really slid down and sleeping, I guess you wouldn't see them. But it there does not appear to be a person in the pass. Again, it's really hard to make out. But if there's a person in the driver's seat, clearly we would not be able to see them. So is Mora with someone else, in which case she would not be the driver? And... Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting point there. I don't know how to get around that point. Now, of course, again, in other ATM stills, it appears that the car is not there. So, again, if this is heavily edited, what would be the motive? Did they edit out a vehicle? So some people say the footage is really, really fishy, and then also the reason they didn't re release all the stills is it possible someone really just stopped randomly right there by the ATM? But if they're going to wait to use the ATM, I mean, wouldn't they wait for more readily? I mean, why would they just leave? I guess it's a theoretical possibility that someone did pull up, notice the ATM was in use, didn't feel like waiting, and pulled away. Is that a possibility? And then the vehicle's not associated with more money. I mean, anything's possible. Or is this footage just heavily manipulated? I mean, the only real way you would know is, of course, yeah, getting the raw, original, unedited footage with all of the frames. I mean, only a few frames are released. What's on all the other frames? And was there a vehicle specifically deleted 
from this ATM footage, which opens up another can of worms and why all the manipulation. If you haven't checked out the previous Mindshock episode, specifically dealing with the shadiness of the Oxygen show and the gaslighting that was unleashed through the, the Oxygen show, clearly agenda-driven to, uh, again, as Art Roderick openly stated, he didn't deny it, it's just to put the police conspiracy theory to bed. It's not to find the truth. It's not to expose police officers if they're complicit and responsible. It's, it's to shut down the theory, regardless of truth. It's to put that theory to bed. That was the goal of the Oxygen series, according to Art Roderick, who I believe also produced the series. <laughs> or whatever, it's affiliated somehow in the production, this former U.S. Marshal. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, we don't even know who was the individual in the possibly reenacted liquor store footage. And the answers we got from all these different people, uh, the actress that played Maura Murray in an email uh, correspondence, she stated that she did do a reenactment, but that's not her footage. And other people postulated that they reenacted it with Maggie Freeling as well. But that does not appear to be who's in the footage either. And it doesn't quite look like Maura Murray either. So who the heck is in the footage in the reenacted liquor store footage for the Oxygen show that was only shown in a quick preview and not actually got... They actually didn't really even cover that. Why was that all deleted? I think a lot of answers do lie in the... In the I don't know, Maggie... What did Maggie say? They had like six extra hours or something like that or even more of footage and material that never aired? A lot of the answers might lie in that material because who knows, I postulated the theory that Maggie was just being used as a useful idiot. She's not actually complicit in anything. And she was being honest and she was trying to find the truth, but she was just being hoodwinked by all sides, by Art Roderick and all these other gaslighters, so to speak. So she was just hoodwinked to the point where she really believes everything she's saying and there was no conspiracy and all of that. So she was just manipulated into this, which of course, that's how most conspiracies are carried out. There's very few people in the know. Coincidence theorists are just really ignorant of how conspiracies actually work. And so then they use all these straw men arguments. Obviously quite silly. So let's move on to... Here is yet another mind shock. I don't know how this info has been under wraps for so long. But Repulsive Wallaby874 on various Maura Murray subreddits. I mean, this, this poster... Is, uh, is a leading researcher here. I mean, they are really pushing a lot of ideas and a lot of information. So a lot of credit goes out to Repulsive Wallaby here. Basically, they copy-pasted this post here. Supposedly, this is the second individual who has stated that there was someone else actually in the ATM with her. Here's the post here. I get it when I asked on the private board, why not release? He says there was another customer in the ATM booth at the same time, but he was a stranger and not with her or anything. So why not just blur his face out and ATM cameras only pick up a close range of the custard? Maybe that's supposed to be customer and what's behind them. So his full body wouldn't even be shown, right? I don't get why they only show the couple frames that just have Miss Murray. Why not show all the frames, but just blur out the stranger who didn't have anything to do with anything? Why? And why had the person who was in the M at the same time as Miss Murray talk to the news? Did the police even contact him? Had not the person who was in the same... I don't know this. I don't know what's going on with this English here. Does that mean they didn't talk to the news or they did? Did the police even contact him? If I was behind someone in line at the ATM who was later missing, you bet your bottom dollar I would go to every news leader and tell them so I can help give a better description of her or him. Dear, well, yeah, because that would that might have been the last person to have seen her. 
Dear police, if you are reading this, I think it would be really good to release. That way people know the clothes she was wearing. What if she is still out there and still had the same shirt or something and someone saw her and thought that looks like her but can't be? Oh, she is wearing the same shirt in the ATM video. I'm actually going to report this. Or what if people came across clothes off one of the trails or something? God, I hope that isn't the case. But if I see clothes when walking the dog like a shirt or shorts, I think a hiker might have not zipped his backpack all the way up and it fell out. But if I recognized a short or pants, see what I'm getting at? I've been reading the blog and I want to help. You've seen her poor dad. He wants answers. Why are police being so hard on him and everyone else who wants to help? Please, people, write letters to the police. If they get enough, maybe they will do more. Or even write Trump or Congress or New Hampshire rep. Maybe they can help. How can we help? Yeah, I don't know how old this comment is. Maybe it's a few years old. But people are stating that MJA investigations constantly use the term Miss Murray, whereas most people just say Mora or Mora Murray. So apparently MJA investigations are known for saying Miss Murray. What's interesting, MJA investigations on Twitter stated this December 4th, 2021. MJA investigations preaches about ethics of all types. We were banned for life on web sleuths and Reddit. We were posting true crime and they called it promotional. Some of the cases we didn't even work on but knew the case needed some type of coverage. Weird. So I don't know if there's some kind of allegations that they were onto something. A post about him by Unable Strain. Mark seemed like a genuinely nice person. He let me call him once after an online discussion about potential suspects and was more than happy to talk and share information. I am not sure if he's on Reddit and he may have been referring to a private Facebook group. I know he was active on one when I was still on there. Maybe some people are here too. Okay. Some more posts here. It was kind of odd how they presented the pics to the family on the Oxygen show. Fred was denied the images in 2006 when he sued the state. But Maggie Freeling busts out her laptop and lo and behold, a couple of blurry ATM pics of Mora from 2004 that weren't allowed to be seen until then. If I were the dad here, I would have demanded to know how Oxygen got them to be shown. Fred had spent money to get refused years ago, but curiously nothing. Another post here, Fred's reaction to events don't make sense. I would be livid if I was him that the ATM images were shown decades later and would be useless, but used on TV for more drama. He also had no reactions that we know of to Billy Roush's multiple sexual allegations or Scott Wall's alleged allegations. Makes you wonder. Those are good points. He flipped out about Maggie asking about his, his own allegations, but has been quiet on all the other issues. Scott Wall sitting at CrimeCon with Julie, all the allegations on Bill Roush, then Oxygen flaunting info about Mora's case that he couldn't get in court. It does seem very strange. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I, again, I have, I have no responses here because this is all highly bizarre. This is one of the most bizarre cases ever. I mean, almost none of the people in this case, I mean, nobody really makes any sense here. I mean, no matter where you look, from Mora's supervisors, at the security desk, from that alleged me meltdown, which might have been made up, she might have been fired at the security desk the Thursday night, from the supposed accident, the Hadley accident, all the different parties, if you haven't checked out the previous episode on the other party, where Mora was even staying, whether it was the Phillips Street address, like other members on the track team, who apparently was also one of her last known phone calls, which nobody ever talks about, and these people who also have connections to Lime Kim Road in Haverhill specifically. And then the latest bombshell that I went over on the previous episode, apparently one of the Haverhill police officers has a family member at UMass at that time. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it's just kind of weird because there's only a couple of police officers in this hamlet in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I don't know. It's really weird. Another solid post here from an astute researcher. Many people do not know that there isn't one image of Mora and the Saturn together on February 9th. It's a very important point to the story, yet nothing exists. This cold case is full of assumptions. And that's also a good point. Unless there's, like, toll booth footage... 
of Mora driving in the Saturn, in which case they, they should have released it if, if it exists. Supposedly, there's also footage from a bank next to the Butson's store that Mora allegedly stopped with, and that Butson's clerk was the one way back when, I think this was originally reported on Renner's blog, that she saw Mora come in with two other girls, and she could have sworn it was Mora. And there was no security footage in the Butsons, but supposedly there was a bank next to it where you could see them. And supposedly, I mean, was it's really hard to find information on that. Supposedly that footage does exist. Some people allege that Fred might have even seen it, but if it's really far, I mean, would you be able to make out that it was more? I mean, you might be able to make out the jacket, though, if it was the exact same jacket. But you might also be able to make out if, I don't know how much of that it shows, does it show where the car was parked, if it was the Saturn? I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions, but the point is, none of this has ever been released. So if there's gas station footage, the lic the actual liquor store footage, none of it has ever been released. So, yeah, anybody placing Mora with the Saturn is, of course, assuming, because UMass, of course, has, has security footage of their parking lots and public main hall areas in the residential halls and on campus. They've never released anything either. So for all we know, the Saturn was already off campus for at least a week. Maybe that's why she was driving Fred's car because the Saturn wasn't even there. So who knows how long the Saturn was no longer in the UMass area. All of it is assumptions. Another post here, the ATM is the only proof that it was Maura Murray on February 9th. If that ATM is doctored, or found to be only used for TV drama and from another date, then the whole February 9th story falls apart. Atwood did not know Maura Murray and didn't ask who she was. If we don't have the ATM, then all we have is Fred Murray dropping her off on Sunday at UMass as the last verified sighting. I wonder if UMass ever asked Bill Roush if when he visited at UMass, how he got into the dorms or if he had a key to her room. Uh, another response here, Erin Larkin had mentioned when she was doing security at the same time as Mora that many used to sneak in back dorms and avoided the security desk altogether. Also, many would slip by during off security hours when another swiped the doors. Security was done by midnight during the week, then 2 a.m. on weekends. After that, it's game on with tricks I'd imagine to find ways to sneak into the dorms. Those are all excellent points. Those are all very excellent points. Uh, and there, there's yet more here. I bet there were multiple cameras in that parking lot. Um, this is assuming, I'm assuming they're talking about the ATM here, because there were other businesses there. If, the, if there was or was not a Saturn damaged or not is the question. If it was damaged, then I believe this would tip off the public that everything started at UMass. That's a great point because if the damage is all there by the ATM, if this, if she's even using the Saturn there and it's in that parking lot, if it looks identical to the way that it looks post Haverhill, what does that mean? Another post, right, I think it's also possible other footage could show Mora getting into another car as a passenger. There's an early, early article that states Mora withdrew cash from an ATM at 3.40 p.m. Interesting, as the timestamp on the footage shows 3.15 p.m. Perhaps she was being driven around to multiple ATMs by someone that day. Also, other early articles say Mora stopped at a liquor store that same afternoon, but it doesn't mean she actually went in and purchased anything. She could have just as easily given someone cash and they bought the items. Yeah, the receipt in no way proves who bought the items. I mean, that's something uh, the Dunning-Kruger crowd, they maintain that that receipt proves Mora took the items and it proves Mora made it to Haverhill. <laughs> I mean, this is kindergarten level stuff, but they're supposedly functioning adults that they, they just don't get it. A few more posts here rounding out some of the earlier theories. Maybe it was a Saturn hooked up to a tow truck. Obviously, they wouldn't want to release that footage because then, I mean, what does that mean? 